What does it mean it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God? Today I want to show how God's Bible rules really prevail in understanding the Word of God and how, well, just kind of guessing at things and, and just trying to imagine things in your mind can be really neat and make you feel good and make you feel nice and and really is attractive to a lot of other people because you have some pretty interesting things to say, God's Bible rules is just as fascinating and more interesting when you use them because it makes the Word of God true. We don't need to guess in certain things and we can know for certainty what is being said. And today I want to talk about that in the history of when Jesus says it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle and what that actually means. So let's get into it. We're going to start and I'm going to read from Matthew 19 and I start in verse 16 and we're going to read this history and we're going to understand it from the Bible alone, letting the Bible interpret itself. So in Matthew 19, starting in verse 16, it says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? And he said to him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he saith unto him, Which? And Jesus says, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man saith unto him, All these I have kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, Go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, that thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus saith unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed and saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So I'm just going to show you how I do my Bible study. So we got this part here where it says, The eye of a needle. Now, we're trying to figure out what does it mean, the eye of a needle? Because all of a sudden you have funny wording here. It says, shall hardly, you know, so a, cam- a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. So I'm sure many of you have heard that there's like gates to the to the city and they call them uh, needle eyes and all these different things. But we want to use the Bible to interpret itself and we're going to see if we can find that. Now there's other wording here Then the disciples then say, who can be saved? And then Jesus says, with men, it is impossible. And that is something for us to recognize. It is impossible. So if it's impossible, where is this hardly? And what is the eye of a needle? So I'll show you what I do here. I'm going to go to my Bible. This is my Bible app. And I do a search. Let's just look up the word needle. And we have two hits for needle. And then we find that it's a story. It's easy to go through eye of a needle. And then we see that here, it's easier to go through the eye of a needle again. So then we need to look at some other wording that would be around that. So we'd seen here, so we'd seen here that it says, shall hardly enter. What does that mean? Now, one of the first things that people are going to do is they're going to go to a dictionary. So this is a nice app because it has a dictionary on it too. And then we just have to look up the word hardly. And then we get this. So it says hardly. So with with difficulty, with great labor, scarcely, barely. And you you can just look at all these definitions. And that doesn't sound like it's impossible. Now it says with God things are possible. We still need to understand this more. Is it talking about a keyhole gate or what is it talking about? So what so what we should do then is let's try looking up and tracing our words through the Bible and find out what hardly means. What does hardly mean in the Bible? So we see, I type in hardly, 
there's only eight times that it's in the Bible. So this is an easy study for us to figure out. So it says, when Sarah dealt hardly with her, so this is talking about Hagar, right? She's dealing hard with her. So that's not talking about uh, not making it easy. It's just she dealt hardly, harshly. So we don't want the word harsh. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go that the Lord slew all the firstborn in Egypt. Well, uh, from the man, the firstborn of the beast, therefore I sacrificed unto the Lord to open the matrix. So it says that Pharaoh would hardly let them go, but he didn't let them go. And that's why he slew all these firstborn. So all of a sudden this is saying, is not letting go. So hardly means firmly not. So you're not. Okay, let's look at another definition. And they shall pass through it hardly, be stead and hungry. So that's referring more as what Sarah was with Hagar, where it was harshly. Uh, and then we have what we're looking at here. You know, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Another, And then here it says, how hardly shall they that have riches enter the kingdom of heaven? So it's saying the same thing as what we we're just looking at too. Now we have this verse that it says, And a spirit taketh him, and he crieth out, and it teareth at him, foaming again, and bruising him, hardly departing from him. And and I besought and I besought thy disciples and cast him out, and they could not. So this is talking about the history where there's a man with a demon possessed son, and he came to Jesus because the disciples could not cast out this demon. So here's a question. If they couldn't cast out the demon, was the demon coming and going or was it always there? The demon never left the boy because it was impossible for them to cast the demon out. It's not like a demon comes and goes. That's not how that works. Let's see what other we have. And when Jesus saw that, he was very sorrowful and he said, how hardly shall they receive, how hardly shall they that have riches enter in the kingdom of, of God? Hmm. So that's going back to the same parable that we're looking or the story that we're looking at with the rich young ruler. And it says, how hardly passing it, they came to the place that is called Fair Havens. So here, so they, when they had sailed slowly many days and scarce were come over against Sindis, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under, under Crete over against Salmon and hardly passing it came to a place which is called the Fair Havens. So here we see the word hardly being used the way that we would normally see it, like think about it being used, where it's just, and just barely passing it. So if we go to Google map, and I brought it up already, we see that we have fair havens here. And then if you have this one, you see someone. So they just, they pass this and it says they just hardly passed it. And then they arrived at fair havens. So that's as long as these maps are accurate. And we'll just say that they are because that works. Now we have two definitions that work. So just barely or firmly not, right? Which we had seen in the earlier verses, like this one in Exodus, where Pharaoh would not let them go, would hardly let, let us go. He didn't let them go anywhere. So it was a firmly not. So then when we look back at our big, oh, I got that thing there. So when we come back to this, we have to look at this that the rich man shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. Now let's think about that. That rich man that went away sorrowful, is he going to enter into heaven? Will he hardly enter into heaven? Was he getting there by his works alone? Because he wouldn't sell his riches, but his works was going to allow him to enter into heaven? So while I was doing this study, I thought, oh, I'm going to do a video on it. As I'm doing this video, I'm like, oh man, I, I still didn't even have it all right. So we're going to see where this is going to bring us. But first, let's just see why we don't use the Hebrew or the Greek. So if we go to Exodus, is it Exodus 13, 15? Let's just see here. Exodus 13, 15. When Pharaoh would hardly let us go. Okay, remember, we talked about that, that he'd hardly let them go. Did that mean that he let them go or did it mean? So we're going to look at it here. Uh, we can see what it means. So this is hardly, primitive root, dense, tough, severe, cruel, fierce, grievous, be in, have some, hard, sore. So here we see that if we go to the Greek and Hebrew, 
this verse makes no sense whatsoever. And you're guessing because you're trusting a man's dictionary versus the word of God and using the dictionary to let us see that Pharaoh would hardly, which firmly would not let them go. And that's why the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. The beauty about God's Bible rules is, is when you're using them, we pray and we ask the Holy Spirit for help. And it'll help us to think of things that we should look up that'll connect these Bible verses. So one of the things that I thought of was all things common. We have two hits for that. And we go to, all of a sudden it takes us to Acts and it says, we'll start up a little bit, right about, uh, we'll start in verse 42 and it says, And then he continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking bread and in prayers. And a fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all believed and were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. What did Jesus tell the, the rich young man to do? To sell all his possessions and goods. So we find that the apostles did this. They had love one for another. Let's go. And we see it now in, in, in uh, chapter 4 as well. It says that the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. How many things are really yours? Are you taking any of it to heaven? So let's think about this. When we see these examples now, what was that saying in the Bible when we read about that rich young ruler, that it was impossible for him to come, but with God it was possible. But could he have done it? Was it hardly? He couldn't do it. He was not going to hardly make it into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said it was impossible for him to come into the kingdom of heaven. And that's why we use these Bible rules, because the Bible is the one that needs to be its own expositor. And then we can see that what Jesus was saying here, no rich man's going to hardly just scrape through by the skin of his teeth to enter into heaven. They need to be, they need to have love one for another. Here's a Bible verse. Let me just look it up here. Uh, love another. Four. Will that get us there? Whoops. Another four. Another four. And this is the Bible verse that I was looking for. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. You see how I was doing that? I'm going to leave that in there. You just seen where I'm like, couldn't remember the words. And I just typed in a bunch of them until I knew what it was. I couldn't remember the exact words, but we praise God that God will lead us into all truth. It says in Revelation 3.14, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. I word that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and I am increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. Right? Did he not think he was rich? The rich young ruler thought he was rich, but he was poor, blind, and naked. Then the word says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, and thou mayest be, be clothed, and that thy shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye slab, that, that thou mayest see. And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him and sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down on my, with my father on his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The Bible speaking about more than just temporal things. A rich man 
that does not share his wealth, that does not give to somebody else, that they might buy of God the gold and the white raiment and all those things cannot enter into heaven. In John 5.39, it says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are which testify of me. What testifies of Jesus? What would Jesus do? What is the best example we can find in the Bible that explains its situation? It says in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, For ye know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be made rich. When we see this and we understand this, all of a sudden the eye of a needle is not this gate that they call a needle gate. We don't have to take these things that people have used and gave a definitions for. We need to use the Bible to interpret itself. So as we've seen through the Bible interpreting itself, and I took some vaguer scriptures, and there's many other ones that are much, much more clear. So as you search this out yourself to understand, using God's Bible rules, how we interpret the scriptures, the word of God becomes beautiful. The eye of a needle? Yes, it was impossible. Jesus said it was impossible. It was impossible for man, but with God, all things were possible. So the eye of a needle was just a needle. It was not a gate that a camel got through on its knees and crawled through. It's my prayer that we'll use God's Bible rules. They are so beautiful. They're so connected. And it's the only way possible to have unity in God's church. The sword came to unite. But as it unites, it divides. Those that use the word of God to interpret itself compared to those that do not. We're not to go to dictionaries. We're not to go to the Greek and the Hebrew. When we do these things, we see so many flaws and errors. All those dictionaries are not inspired. But God has protected his word.